right in the head, knocks him straight backwards and on the ground. That's a big time hit. Denied once. Here they go again. Second down. It's a touchdown. Well, wait a second. Oh, my. Medlem down on the goal line. The officials are confused. One man, single touchdown. The rest of them are looking for the football that popped out. It looked like Taylor was across for the score. Marcus Paul is signaling that they're saying Syracuse has got the football. But the man at the bottom of the screen, the line judge, had signaled touchdown right away. There's also a flag down in the end zone. I guess we'll have to let them sort it out. <laughs> <laughs> Offside on the defense. It will be second down. Well, that makes their decision easy. That's the easiest way out. If that guy called touchdown, it should have been. But they end up with a touchdown. See it? Oh, he's lined up way off sides. The end man in the line, that's Terry Wooten, their fine outside linebacker. But if you take the penalty, that means it wasn't a touchdown, which means if he wouldn't have been off sides, it would have been a fumble. That could be come back to haunt them later on. Obviously, a big play, a big break for West Virginia. One of the 63,000 holding their breath right there. Now they'll get a second chance. Second down, goal to go. Well, he's done it all season long. Major Harris tried the quarterback keeper. Did he get in? Doesn't look like it. Well, they've tried all three running backs to get through now. They tried the tailback first. That took too long to get to the line of scrimmage. They tried the fullback. That took too long. So they went with the quarterback, hoping he could get over the, the goal line before the linebackers could fill it. And we'll see if he gets in if we look from the side. Does he get the ball across? He doesn't get much of a leap, does he? It all depends where the ball is. Is the helmets across, that's for sure. I don't know how you even tell from either side if he got across or not. Third time the charm. Yes, it is. Taylor takes it over, and the Mountaineers are on top. They made him earn that yard, I'll tell you that. Greg Taylor right there feeling the effects of constant pounding on those plays. Because you remember, he was the back that led the tailback through on the first down play. He got hit real hard and fumbled on the second down play. Finally got in the end zone, but took more big hits. Well, that's his 15th career touchdown, and it was probably the biggest of his career. Bowman on for the chip shot, and he gets it. So the ears are out to an early start as they lead 7-0 with 8.52 left to go here from Mountaineer Field. You can get this wireless AMF. Very quickly off to that scoring drive, 60 yards. Stan White was impressive. Uh, real impressive because they went through them quickly and opened up huge holes until they got down to the one yard line. There you see the two deep guys, but before we get to that, let's take a look at that scoring drive. 60 yards, they ran every play. And 11 is a little bit deceiving because it took three or four to get in from the one. So, as we say, they went down there real quickly, and it took a while to get in the end zone, but Syracuse has got to be saying, we've got to toughen up our first down defense especially. And a little short of this time, and up on it is Greg Walker. Across the 25, out to the 29. The reason why we had a short delay earlier this evening but because of the start of the game was a headset problem, John Snyder. Well, they still have the headset problem down here, Denny. Normally, these headsets are on the heads of the assistant coaches down here so they can talk with their counterparts in the press box. They do have a phone working, but for the first six minutes of this game, they've had no communication with the press box. Officials are working on it, may get it done, but right now the Syracuse coaches really can't talk upstairs except on that phone. And that's real important, Denny, because they call plays from up in the press box, send them down to the sideline, and then use messengers to bring the plays in. The offensive coordinator can't call from up here. They're really cut off from their football team. George DeLone, the offensive coordinator for Syracuse, probably pulling his hair out right now. First down and 10 from the 29. For the Orange, they trail now, 7-0, though. Well, they go back to old faithful Daryl Johnson, who came off a big, big game against BC last week. Well, they called Daryl Johnson one of the best or the best fullback in the country, and I'd have to agree with them. This guy may be a first-round draft choice in the NFL. He fit in great down with Don Shula of Miami because he can catch the football. He blocks great, and he runs from tackle to tackle. And you watch tonight. When they need a big play, when they need a first down, they're going to go to Daryl Johnson. 
brings up second down now in about seven. Bill Cox going to look downfield and then swing it out to Drummond, who's got some running room. Up, slipped at about the 38-yard line. Could have picked up a few more yards, I think, but he went down because of the turf. No, no doubt that the, the thin film of uh, moisture on this turf has made it slippery. When you go to make a cut, when you're not sure you're going to have to make that cut, you don't know how to uh, apportion your weight, that's when you go down. Drummond just short of the first down, only because of the slip. Drummond is only... Uh, Caught 11 passes this season, so they really haven't gone to him much through the air. Two tight end offense out of the wishbone. Johnson going to have enough, I think, for the first down as he's near the 40-yard line. Mike Fox out of Akron, Ohio, in on the tackle. Again, they went back to the wishbone. Two tight ends, short yardage offense. And Again, when they need a big play, when they need to keep going, if they go to Daryl Johnson. They didn't the first time on short yardage. They didn't make it. This time they said, let's go to our bread and butter, the guy that usually gets it for us. And uh, they're going to measure, but I think he has it. It's been difficult for the offensive coaches at Syracuse not to be able to communicate down to the field stand. That's got to be causing some problems. Well, they did make the first down, as we see, but yeah, obviously it caused a lot of problems because they've done it all year long. Talking to uh, George DeLeon, the offense coordinator, they audible about 80% of the time. Now, some of those are insignificant audibles or small audibles, like changing which side, right or left, we're going to run the play, but still, if you don't have the proper play call, you don't have the sequence to audible from. This time, it's Rob Moore split out to the left. Duval Glover flanked to the right, and the slot is Davis. He's moved all over the field. A little option football now. Michael Owens trying to turn the corner and does. Grabs a piece of it before he's uh, shoved out of bounds at about the 46. For those of you who had a chance to watch some of that uh, Big Apple NIT last night on ESPN, Billy Owens for Syracuse starring. And, of course, his uh, older brother, Michael, going to get a chance to play here tonight. Well, he's going to play a lot. He's got excellent talent. And uh, watch number 87 where he lines up. You saw him go in motion from the slot that time because he likes to lead on the small defensive backs. He's 250 pounds and can really block downfield. Again, it's Owens, cuts through a hole, keeps churning inside the 45, down to about the 43. Uh, Daryl Whitmore in on the tackle, a 10-yard gain that time for Michael Owens. This is one of the favorite plays of Syracuse. Watch number 62, the offensive right tackle. They start off to the right, and then see him pulling right there, right down the screen. It's almost a quick counter, because they don't actually counter with the back but they run the off-tackle play and let him cut back into the counter following the pulling tackle. It's one of their favorite plays and one that, I mean, that West Virginia was really worried about because he gets there so quickly that it can break on you. First and 10 for the Orange now. Monica, a drive. Play action, and there you see, back at the 45-yard line, Phil Cox's feet simply slipped right out from underneath, and he looks a little disgusted. First time we've seen the four-receiver set. Only a single back, and that's Johnson for blocking purposes. Second down now and a bunch. Or draw. <laughs> There it is, the old linebacker, Stan White. You saw that one all the way. That's obviously the play that you look for in that situation. Second and long is a key drawdown. You'll see both of those te these teams in second and 10 plus go to the draw, go to the screen, because you're hoping you can get a big chunk of that yardage back and then get the first down on third and medium. But they got, they got about five on that, makes it third and 15. They were hoping to break for probably around 10. Dick McPherson, we had a chance to chat with him last night and uh, what a classy individual. He huh? really loves his team, his coaches, the university, and uh, he's enjoying life. Both coaches are credits to their universities. You can say that about this game without any doubt. Look for plenty of pressure this time by the Mountaineers. 
Here they come. Phil Cox has got to scramble for his life. Owens gathers it in, and he's down at about the 36-yard line. Yep, not Owens. Rather, let's make that Duvall Glover. Well, we hear about Major Harris and his scrambling. Todd Philcox does a pretty good job of buying time himself because one of his problems is he's not a great runner. Not problems, that's just one of the things that he was born with. He's not a great runner, but watch him get away from the defensive back, Bo Orlando, blitzing from the outside. He steps up to the middle, finally spots Devon Glover over the middle and gets the pass off. He's short of the first down, but they're now in four down territory and have the opportunity to make the first down on fourth down. First big decision for Dick McPherson, and the Orange will go for it. Oh, my, what a play that time turned in by Glover again. He's got the first down. A good, a well-conceived play. He goes in motion, gets the, def the defense starting to adjust if he was going across, overcommitted a little bit. Then he comes back. He's almost in the backfield when they snap the ball. He sneaks out into the flat, and they know they only need three or four yards. He gets the ball to him quickly before number three, Alvoid Mays, can come up and stop him short of the first down. So a well-conceived fourth and three play. Coverage pretty good that time by Mays. Not good enough. Yep, trying to keep the drive alive now. 7 nothing. West Virginia on top. Stretching out inside the 30 to about the 28. Robert Pickett in on the tackle that time. Daryl Johnson, he's really a load. Well, he's six foot one, 240 pounds. You've seen he can run the ball. He, we know he can catch. He blocks well. He's just an all-around fullback. I mean, true fullback. You don't find a lot of true fullbacks with the advent of the one back, with the advent of the eye, where they become blocking backs quite a bit. This guy's a true fullback. He can do it all. Officials coming out to respot. Syracuse loses about a quarter of a line, or a, a, a yard, I should say. No lives on this field today, man. <laughs> These guys are athletes. Second down, down and seven. With 2.52 left to go here in the opening quarter. Option was faked, and the ball was batted down right at the line of scrimmage. Theron Ellis, one of the players that got a big mid on. Devon Glover was wide open on the play. This is the option where they bring the corner back up to have to take the pitch. Let's watch the big hand of Theron Ellis. He goes down the line. He's wide open. Ellis jumps and knocks the ball down. Remember, he's the guy that blocks extra points and field goals, too. He has a 41-inch vertical jump. I guess that's why you can jump up and knock passes down. Phil Cox now three of four here in the opening quarter for 24 yards. Looking down the middle, he's going for it all, and he off the shoulder pads of Rob Ford. I think they stopped the play before he even started, Denny. One of the uh, back judges threw the flag. I think it was the 25-second clock had run out, so that play would have been uh, null and void no matter what had happened, whether Moore had caught the ball or not, but he was wide open for the six points. Delay a game on the offense. We will add five. It's amazing to me how much time that Phil Cox spends at the line of scrimmage and as we talked to their offensive coordinator last night he said that normally time will change probably 70 or 80 percent of the plays by the time he gets to the line of scrimmage. As we said before yeah some of those are small changes some of them completely from run to pass some of them they change the formation and have to shift around and you're going to run out of time but that time I don't think that was a problem I think he just wasn't watching. Now, West Virginia has put in their dime defense, mass substitutions. That's something that Bob Shaw, their new defensive coordinator, has brought with him from his pro experience. He brings in pass rush specialists. He brings in defensive backs, six of those. We'll see if it's effective here on third and long. We need 11 for the first down. Once again, here comes the option. Nobody takes Phil Cox and finally dragged down out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. 
And that's almost where the stick is, the 22-yard line for the first down. Again, a good call, an audible by Phil Cox at the line of scrimmage. If there's a weakness, 